this morning I wanted to address a little bit about research because one of the things I hear all the time, questions I get, one of the questions I frequently hear is something like, well, where's the scientific research to support what you're saying? Or this scientific research disagrees with what you're saying and says something different. And so I wanted to talk about scientific research in general. And I'm going to start with some, some basic generalities that I think it's important to understand. The, the first one is a very simple fact, and that is that research is expensive. Most research is funded by somebody with a commercial interest. Not all. There is pure science out there. But much of the research accomplished today is funded by somebody that has a commercial interest. And so, for instance, uh, you may have heard about a study that was published, oh, it's probably been 15 or 20 years now, that said that having one alcoholic drink per day was good for you, that it reduced your blood pressure. Anyone aware of the study? Okay, well, now a lot of people took that to heart and thought that's wonderful news. I'm going to have a drink every night, and I'm going to enjoy it, and I can relax knowing it's good for me. So let's look at some facts. First of all, alcohol in the human body is a cellular poison. Okay? It kills living cells on contact. Now, how could a cellular poison be good for you? What's true is that if you can find a way to relax, then your blood pressure benefits as a result of that. Okay? Many people today, live. we live in a stressful world, and many people have lots going on and lots of pressure on them in various ways, and finding a way to relax certainly is good for your health. But let me ask you a question. Do you think you might accomplish the same thing by learning how to meditate or practice yoga or maybe listening to some soothing music or one of many other, you know, taking a bath, one of many other things that one might do? I would suggest that consuming something poisonous is never the way to get healthier. You may get some benefit from it, but there's also a cost at the same time. In this case, you're destroying some of your cells every time you do that. But this research showed very clearly this was good for you. Well, that's interesting. Anybody know who paid for that research? Because someone had to fund the research. Say again? That's right. That research was paid by the Seagram's Company, which is the largest distiller of alcoholic spirits in the world. They own many, many different brands of both hard liquor as well as ale and beer. It's a, it's a British company, and they funded the study. And what you want to understand is that most research is funded by commercial interests like this. There was another study published probably 10 or so years ago, which probably helped fuel the raw cacao boom. What did that study say? Eating chocolate was good for you, especially dark chocolate. This is good for you. Does anybody know who paid for that study? Hershey's. It wasn't Hershey's, but you're close. Nestle. Nestle's. Nestle's paid for this, and Nestle's, by the way, is a bigger company than Hershey's. Okay, now, I believe. Uh, Nestle's paid for that study. Now, do they have some interest in having you believe that chocolate's good for you? Well, you better believe it. Their bottom line directly reflects the number of people who believe chocolate is good for you or not harmful to you. Is it really good for you? Well, I would suggest that anything that contains a bunch of sugar and a bunch of caffeine and other excitotoxins is not good for the body. It's not good for your health. But Nestle's found a way to take the data and create a relationship or find a relationship that made it look as if it was in their best interest to eat chocolate. Let me ask you a question. What do you think would happen if they did the research, they got all the data, and they couldn't find any way to correlate that behavior with a positive outcome? What do you think would happen? Do you think you would have ever heard about the research? Would it have been published? Do you think Nestle's would have published a study saying eating chocolate was bad for your health? Of course not. So any research that, ha that can't be massaged in some way to show a positive outcome, you never see. You never hear about it. Only something where they can massage it, and it's been said before, statistics lie, right? 
or statistics can be used to support anything. What's true is that statisticians lie. The people that take the data are able to, to massage it. And, and you know, if you want to show a different relationship, all you have to do is some case, in some cases with a graph, for instance, is change the distance between the points. And now you've got, instead of this curve, which that's scary to people, you get a nice gentle curve instead. All you've done is make these points further apart. The data is exactly the same. Now, understand that much research is paid for by commercial interests, and if they can't find a way to make it positive, make it look positive, you simply never hear about it. About 10 years ago, I had a client that came and fasted with me for 21 days, and he worked for, or had worked for, one of the big research labs. Now, it, this probably won't surprise you if you think about it, but the big companies that are paying for this research, in most cases, do not do the research themselves. They're not set up to do that. They are research laboratories, they're commercial laboratories that anybody can pay. You want to, let's say you have a line of skincare products and you need to have them tested. You send your line to the research lab. You don't do it yourself. They handle it. They're set up for that. They do it all day long, every day, 12 months a year. This is what they do. Well, I had a client that worked for one of these labs. And he said what often would happen with a, a study that was, and they were only working for commercial interests. So what would happen is they would get, let's say, 10,000 data points. Okay, so if you can picture a graph, let's say you, had, you have a, a page here with 10,000 data points all over the place. But they want to show a relationship that looks like this. So what do they do? Well, they, they throw away the 9,000 data points that don't show that curve, don't show that line, leaving the ones that do. They just pretend those other 9,000 data points never existed. Now they have a 1,000 data point study, which shows the relationship that they're claiming exists. When in fact, if you looked at all the data points, you would have seen there was no relationship whatsoever. Are you with me? Completely.